Hello, everybody, and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today, we'll talk about API gateways, API portals, API catalogs, and API marketplaces. And for this, I have Jamie Ryan here, who is VP of Product Management for the MCP platform at Xway. Hey, Jamie, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing great, Eric. How are you? I'm doing fine as well. Thank you. So Jamie and I, we go back in history, I think, a little bit, right? So we both worked at CA for quite a while, and then you joined Xway, I think, after I did. But now we both uh, are working at Xway. So it's great to see you again. I wanted to talk a little bit about terminology because I think it's something where people sometimes wonder a little bit about what things mean. And I said that in the introduction already. So today we'll talk about API gateways, about portals, catalogs and marketplaces. And all of these components are important, I think, and they are all somehow related and do, let's say, similar things in the API management space. So we'll just have a little bit of conversation around what these things mean, okay? Yeah, sounds great. Good, let's start with a gateway. And I think, you know, that's also how our history kind of goes back, right? At CA, I think the gateway definitely was still the big thing that, that we were working on there. So API gateways, why do we have them and what are they? Yeah, uh, over the last 20 years, I've worked uh, for, I think, four different API gateway vendors. So it, it's it's very much uh, part of my history and, and really core to the, the topic of, of API management. Uh, and gateways are all about in, enforcing policies, uh, security, uh, and then potentially more around uh, around the actual runtime um, consumption of, of APIs uh, or going back to uh, SOAP services and, and other uh, other things prior prior to APIs. Uh, but it, it's it's about defining the policy uh, that's trying to get enforced at runtime. So gateway, and, and I think in the end, right, the term was just stolen from the regular network, networking Parlance, right? It's like a gateway is basically just some box I put in front of my API to manage it, mostly to secure it, I guess, historically speaking, or do other things with it. Now, yeah. gateways were probably the first really sort of commoditized components in the API space. And I would, I would think that the next one probably would be portals. So why do portals exist? How did portals come into existence? Yeah, so if gateways are the the infrastructure kind of sitting there, often at the edge, uh, and processing those transactions, you then need a way to find the APIs that, that are um, being processed there. How do I how do I find and consume uh, those APIs? Well, where is the endpoint? How do I register? Uh, that sort of thing. And so portals were very much about um, for a particular developer constituency. Um, bringing them on board, uh, managing their access, uh, and providing them with some some list of APIs that they could uh, potentially subscribe to and, and consume. Mm -hmm. And I think historically speaking, portals, at least from those that I remember, they were always conceived kind of by gateway vendors. Right? It was kind of a logical extension to say, okay, we have a gateway that allows you to manage your APIs. And then if you want to have a view into the APIs that, that you are managing, then yeah. the portal is something that you can use. And you can, like you said, you can point developers to it who then get, an, get a view into the, the APIs that, that you have available. Now, this is still something that is very much relevant, but I think there's a little twist in kind of how the API space developed where kind of this particular model of how portals work, right, started being not quite as useful as it used to be. Yeah, early in the API management, there were some that kind of went developer or portal first uh, and, and were more about the experience. But as you said, most were just kind of driven from the gateway. So these are the things that are available on the gateway. Uh, and this is this is what you can use, um, but that starts to get complicated when uh, you your uh, environments start to expand. When you start to to scale this up, uh, when you have different APIs in different locations for uh, for different constituencies, and that's where you start to get the the concept of catalogs, uh, where you can register uh, kind of multiple environments, multiple APIs, 
uh, and bring them together and, and to do some sort of consolidation uh, and uh, have access from a, a single uh, kind of centralized place uh, to multiple multiple gateway instances or multiple uh, environments. So as a, the concept of a catalog then mostly revolves around kind of becoming independent of, or not independent, but becoming able to do API management across different environments that I might have. Right? I think that's probably the most important part there. Yes. And I, I think we've seen that 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 more and more you have configurations in companies right where this is necessarily the case they have on premise they have cloud they have multi cloud so so they just have like an a growing zoo of APIs and also we always tell them you should do APIs they make a lot of sense and then they do and then they wonder you know how do we manage this zoo now in particular when we have them technically managed in different environments so so how how could I kind of envision this this catalog kind of working for me? How does it, as somebody who's mostly interested in APIs and not so much in the technicalities of in which environment they're deployed, um, how does the catalog make this easier for me as somebody who has such a catalog? Sure. Uh, I mean, the catalog is all about that, that layer of abstraction. It, it shouldn't matter uh, where the APIs are deployed or uh, what's sitting in front of them or what policies are being executed on them. You want to provide that as an API provider, you want to provide that level of, of abstraction to the consumer so they can go in and have a consistent consumption experience. They, they can discover what's available. Uh, they can get information about it, hopefully fresh information, not, not stale information. Uh, and, and they can uh, subscribe to uh, an API and, and start consuming it uh, from there. Uh, their applications, uh, and then that catalog can provide uh, provider side information about kind of who who's doing that, who who, who are your uh, developers, who's subscribing to it, uh, and what kind of uh, usage is, is happening uh, across mm -hmm. those environments. So if I if I listen to this explanation of a catalog, uh, we we can kind of go back in history almost a little bit because it reminds me a little bit of this this, this fourth term that we also wanted to talk about which is the API marketplace, right? So the idea of API marketplaces has been around for a very long time. And it, it started out, I think, as something that was quite a bit different from kind of the more enterprise-y um, approach, right? Where people just said, hey, you know, we're, we're a marketplace. If you have an API, just register it here and then people can subscribe. And, and there were, and there are some of these marketplaces around could you briefly, you know, describe the history of those? Yeah, uh, the catalogs were were primarily internal enterprise, uh, very much under under your own control. Uh, Marketplace kind of took that concept and threw the doors open and said, "Okay, let, let's have these uh, public marketplaces where uh, anybody can go register their APIs. Um, I could go in and register somebody else's public API uh, just as a as a." centralized repository. Um, there are some famous kind of catalogs, public uh, marketplaces uh, through through history, like Programmable Web, uh, where they would they would create these catalogs and every few months they'd say, oh, there's there's a thousand APIs in the in the marketplace. There's five thousand I think they're the yeah, they where are they now? Have you seen any recent numbers? They must be tens, many tens of thousands, right? Uh, well, yes, they, they were certainly at tens of thousands. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know how much uh, traction they're they're getting at this point, uh, yeah. but that, that curve was definitely kind of exponential, and and it was something that was reported on kind of state of the API uh, market every year. Uh, like, look where look where the curve is on the programmable web, uh, and so it was about yeah, let's let's get all the APIs out there. Um, eventually, those evolved to, to have some commercial aspects as well. So uh, I might want to publish my, my API to a public marketplace, uh, but I also want to do uh, get some revenue from it. Uh, I want to sell it. Uh, and so the, those marketplace platforms uh, were developed that, uh, that put some commercial terms around them, um, did some, some of the uh, SLAs and, okay, is this supported? Is it not? How much is this going to cost? 
what are the different uh, different models for either revenue sharing or kind of direct uh, direct payment. Uh, and so it, it became uh, a commercial uh, that obviously the, the the term market marketplace um, suggests uh, commercial terms. Uh, and, and that's the the direction that it kind of evolved in. Um, but again, it was it was just kind of open to everybody in, in a free for all. So you might go to look for uh, a mapping API and come up with ten different uh, APIs that you don't know whether they're stable. You don't know what the what the quality is. Usually, I think eight of them wouldn't exist anymore. So you know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That that staleness is is a real uh, part of the part of the problem, uh, and yeah. I think that's where. Or some of the more recent changes to make it more make marketplaces uh, kind of recapture that that term uh, for the enterprise. Uh, that's where some of the the evolution is is happening. So then, if you are saying you know there is now there may be a moment in time where marketplaces become a little bit more enterprisey. How then would you say what's the difference then compared to a portal? Like what, what? How do these two these concepts right? Because they are that's they are overlaps. Let's put it like this. So what what yes. would you say are the differences? Yeah, and so I, I'd say the difference is still the um, are we talking about APIs that I control and uh, have very specific uh, information around where I'm defining the policy and I can uh, exactly who gets access to it and, and I can put that in the portal based on my implementation. Uh, or are we opening it up and really trying to build an ecosystem uh, that's not just my APIs distributed as they may be, but also partner APIs, uh, different types of assets, uh, also third-party APIs that that might be relevant to uh, the consumers, to, to my developers that are actually building uh, applications uh, for me. So uh, maybe it's my stuff, maybe it's partner, maybe it's uh, Salesforce uh, APIs or work yeah, just some stuff we, we uh, use and need. You know, that as an enterprise, we use and leverage, uh, but putting it into the the internal um, enterprise marketplace gives us a little more uh, a little more visibility and control about how it's being used and, and who gets mm -hmm. access. So in that case, a portal then, which which I think traditionally has been the case anyway, right? A portal would be more driven kind of inside out from like some assets that you have somewhere and you make them available through the portal. And the marketplace then can also be that, but it also can be driven outside in that you say, here's stuff that I don't own or control, but I use it. I want to make it findable. So I make it available in the marketplace. Yeah, I think there's still very much room for a portal. It's just for more specific use cases and more specific uh, developer constituencies or, or brands. It becomes more about the, the the customization of the look and feel and the incorporation of of other widgets and and CMS mm -hmm. content um, that's specific to uh, a consumer uh, group. Uh, if I'm a, a conglomerate of banks, uh, I might have a marketplace that. Uh, goes across all of the those banks uh, and shares APIs internally, but I might have a portal that represents one of those banks uh, for uh, developers that are interested in, in those mm -hmm. APIs specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right. Like, at least the portals that I've seen, not all of them, but what I, CA also, I think, had a little struggle for a while, right, where they switched out the CMS underneath and it was like, yeah, it's all complicated. So, so a lot of them have, yeah, like full-blown CMS underneath. So, so yeah, and, and of course, the, the key is always to uh, have it be API driven from the from the very beginning. It doesn't matter whether it's a catalog or a marketplace or a portal. Uh, they should all be kind of have the same underlying uh, APIs managing the uh, the entities and the life cycles uh, of all those things. Uh, and portals in the past haven't necessarily been uh, been driven in quite the same way. That is very true. The old rallying cry, API, your APIs. Yes. Yeah. Jamie, thanks so much for joining. I think that was a really useful uh, way, you know, to walk us through those terms. And I think uh, everybody now knows a little better where those terms come from. So we talked about gateways, and portals, and marketplaces. And, and I think now 
it's it's a little easier to understand how all these things kind of relate and how kind of the catalog now seems to become kind of a central element in, in this like more and more complex web of different components that we have. Yeah, it's it's all about that kind of virtual consolidation across all of those uh, those environments, bringing back in and then getting the uh, the control over over the user experience uh, for that uh, both the the API provider and that uh, that API consumer. At least that's the the direction it's going in uh, for um, kind of the the enterprisation of the those those marketplaces. Okay, the enterprisation is a nice word. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot for. Sorry. <laughs> you put me on the spot. I'm going to make up a new word. <laughs> it's a good word. So yeah. thanks a lot for taking the time, Jamie. I know it, it has been early for you. It's late for me. So um, now you can start your day and I can end mine. So thanks again for joining. And um, well, I hope I have you back soon. But for now, that was it. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate the chat. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And have a great day. Bye bye.